Hey Xavier at Microchip, I'm here today to show you how to set up the ECC 608 Trust Manager to work with the Keystream software service from Kudalski IoT. Once you're inside the Trust Platform Design Suite and I have opened the Keystream infield provisioning uh, use case, be pointed to this page, scroll down, open the use case help, and in the use case help, essentially this is what we're going to cover during this whole uh, session. Uh, creating a microchip e-commerce account, obviously uh, do that We'll do that separately. It's been done offline. Creating a Keystream account, I've already done that. I'll show you where to go to uh, get it going. Uh, you will register um, the email for Microchip uh, Direct accounts. I'll show you how and why. Uh, you'll be creating an AWS account. You'll be creating a root CA um, with Keys within Keystream. You'll see in a couple of clicks. We'll onboard development kit into Keystream. We'll do the infield provisioning of the custom certificate in the ECC6Y Trust Manager. And we will show you how to manage the certificate from Keystream. There are a couple of uh, steps to prepare the demo. We're going to have to update the, the Wi Fi. I've already done that. Again, follow the instructions here. Uh, make sure everything in TPDS is set up correctly. Uh, but really, the first important step is to open your um, Keystream account. So I've already done that, as you can see here. I'll show you the, the page you'll be landing. So you register for an account or you connect to the account, which is I've already done that. So I already created a bunch of demos. So I already have this root test. I'm going to create the first thing I'm going to do is to create uh, a fleet. So I'm going to tell what am I going to call it? I'm going to call it a uh, video fleet model ABC brand Acme A A A. And manufacturer Tom Tom Tom. Uh, and then this is the magic window here. This is where you create your root CA in a couple of clicks. So here we go. You got your common name for the root CA. We're going to tell it, uh, call it um, PigX. We're going to call the organization uh, Xavier. We're going to call the cert validity. The, sorry, the, um, how do you call that? the root cert validity for 10 years. I'm going to say the operational device certificate is nine years, one year shorter. Um, and I'm going to allow the renewal of leave certificate. That's where you set up your expiry day. So I say 365 days, one year. Okay. I'm going to commit to that and you'll see what's happening. It's going to take just a second. Boom. You created a custom root here in the snap of a couple of uh, information. So you have successfully created your fleet and your roots here, go to the menu device ownership. So here's my uh, big, big X roots here. The device ownership, I have two options. So here's um, a trial we've done where this is where you punch in the email address from your microchip direct accounts of the people that would purchase the part from microchip direct. Okay. Once you've done that, those people that are, are allowed as purchaser will be able to see their devices in their, um, uh, Microsoft Direct e-commerce accounts, and they won't have to upload the manifest. If you don't do this, there's a second flow. That's the flow you want for the development kits. The auto claim will not work for the, the users you, um, uh, involved with development kits. So here I need a manifest essentially. And so the way I get it, I'm going to ba go back to my TPDS, my use case right here. I plugged my board already. And my little board here is connected so I can start the use case. I'm just going to click on the number one. It says, hey, to generate the manifest, you should be factory reset. I'm saying, okay, it's loading up a default firmware. That's going to allow us to go through the rest. It's telling me to uh, connect, disconnect the board. So I'm going to uh, literally unconnect the wife, uh, the USB and reconnect it. And once that's done, I click okay. And then this is where my manifest is going to be generated. I should have a message to me. Hey, this is where your manifest is. Okay, cool. So it ends up in f01.zip. It's a zip file, important for the rest. I'm going to go back directly to my keystream, make sure I don't forget to do that. Uh, and I'm going to go fetch my, um, my uh, manifest. So if you go there, you need for me, I have to go into my user and dot trust platform. This is the magic folder here into Keystream and light manifest. And this is my manifest here. You see it right there, F01. So I'm going to go fetch it here. I'm going to open, import it, 
and that should work. There you go. Now I've got the manifest that represents the the birth certificates uh, associated to private key inside six y that are loaded into your Keystream account. Again, if you use the autoclaim service, you don't have to do that, but you have to create your Keystream account first and then place your order. Okay. I'm going to go click my number two inside the TPDS use case here. When I click that, I have this window that shows up and asking me for the fleet profile uh, public UID. So I'm going to click there. I have to go back to my Keystream account and look for my profile UID, which I'm going to copy and paste in there. Make sure that I don't have the space at the end, right? Um, then uh, the Wi-Fi and the Wi-Fi password, I've already configured them for the sake of privacy. I'm not going to show that here. The Keystream authentication token. So that's a good one. So where this is at is, again, in your Keystream account. You're going to have to go to system and create an API key. So I'm going to create this API key. I'm going to call it uh, Xav Xav. Select a role. I'm going to select admin for the sake of the, um, of the setup. And validity, I'm not going to populate anything. There you go. I've got my um, API key created. The way you access it is if you copy the basic credentials. If I click view, which I'm not going to do that in the video, you can copy the, the key there and paste it into the TPDS. Back in TPDS for the next field, the next field would be my AWS access ID key, which I need to go and log into my AWS account right there. So back in TPDS again, uh, here what TPDS is asking me is an AWS access key ID and a secret access key, okay? So that means I need an AWS account. So I'm gonna go create one. So when you basically register, create the account, swipe the credit cards, you have a setup. What you want to do is go into CloudFormation. Uh, I'm going to create a stack. You look, I already have one created. That's the one I'm going to use for my demo. Um, upload a file here, choose your file. And if you go directly into the dot trust platform folder and look at this as AWS Zero Touch full setup YAML, that's what you want. If you're in China, use the uh, CN file here. So I'm going to double click here. I click next. The names here don't really matter here. Make something comprehensible. You can change stuff here. That's no problem. Continue to accept everything without changing anything on this file. Uh, all the way down here, accept the terms, create the stack, and you'll get something created. I'm going to click cancel here because I'm going to use this one. OK. Once I click here, under output is where you'll find your access key and secret access key. And that's what you want to punch it into TPDS. I've already copy pasted them and they are blurred here for the for privacy uh, purposes. So that's going to take me directly into TPDS again. Back to TPDS, there's one last field here is the region. That's the AWS region that we want. Um, it's located, it's located in your um, uh, in the top right corner of your AWS screen here. And US East 2, again, I've already entered it for the sake of time here. The last thing I have to do is to apply all my uh, credentials in TPDS and click OK. And there you go. My step has been executed. Everything has been taken. Cool. Now I'm going to download the CS search from Keystream. And we'll see if it works. Uh, we'll see if... Um, it's hitting my Wi-Fi and getting the certificate uh, down from Keystream into my uh, my uh, embedded system. There you go. So that's all happening. Good. Now I'm going to register the code from AWS uh, and execute the step by clicking number four. The next day I'm going to uh, download the proof ownership from Keystream. You can see it's executing still successfully. And finally, I'm going to upload and verify the certificate authority and the proof ownership certificate with AWS. Only then I should see messages going up to AWS. So the last step pre in TPDS for me is to go and open up this MPLAB project, which automatically opened this window. So what I did prior to uh, the video, I did a clean and build, which was successful. Okay. Now I'm going to do a make and program. I'm going to wait a little bit. Okay, so the programming of my board is complete right here. And I'm going to click on the little reset button here. I want to make sure I start my firmware from scratch. You see it right there? 
So once that reset, reset, we'll give it a minute because it needs to connect to the hotspot of my phone here. And once it's done, again, I've cut time right in the video, I can very need to verify all that, all those operations have actually taken place. And those operations, essentially, you have Keystream that has in-field provisioned your device certificate into the SIGSOI. This is what has happened. So you created a root, a custom root certificate, a device certificate, they're banded inside the HSM of Kudelski. Uh, there has been uh, some type of uh, challenge response between the secure element and the Keystream that we'll talk in different documentation. But at the end, the Keystream service has been attested, at, has attested the 608 and is sending a custom device certificate inside the 608 in the field. So that notion of infield provisioning happens obviously in field and not during manufacturing. That's what's happening in that demo right there. So let's prove all of that. Uh, if I go to my AWS account, I go into AWS OT, I'm going into things here. I'm going to click on that thing and look at the date here under device shadow. It's March 27, 956. And I'm going to go into my key stream and under my device and look at the timestamp, 9.53. So it took about three minutes to go from one to the other for, for my setup. I don't know what I was doing in between. Uh, but that shows that my device is within my Keystream account and is within my AWS account. So it really demonstrated the, the TPS onboarding has been successful. Thank you for watching and make sure to download the Trust Platform Design Suite and try out the Keystream infield provisioning use case under the Trust Manager platform.